the 2024 C8 Corvette. We have some new changes to talk about for this model year and it's hard to believe this car is four years old and in that time we have three C8 Corvettes to choose from. We have the base Stingray, we have the new hybrid all-wheel drive E-Ray Corvette and of course the Z06. We'll talk about pricing and my thoughts on these three later on in the video. But what's new for the 2024 model year? A lot of new standard safety features. That's primarily what you get, like the forward collision warning, automatic emergency braking with pedestrian slash bicyclist detection. You also get lane departure steering assist with lane departure warning. A rear facing camera with a better field of view. That's something else you get for 2024. And all of these safety features, like I mentioned, it's going to be standard. And for the Stingray 1LT trims, we're gonna get the performance data recorder as an available option. Other than that, you have some new exterior and interior colors. One of which is that new greenish interior called Artemis. Looks pretty interesting. And you got some new wheel designs and some graphics packages. But that's essentially it for the 2024 C8 Corvette changes. Let's talk pricing. A base 1LT Stingray is gonna start at $67,895. And all of these prices include destination. The E-Ray all-wheel drive hybrid Corvette, that's $104,495. And a base Z06 is $109,695. Obviously, my personal pick would be the Z06, and I would at least try to get the 2LT or the 2LZ trim. That's personally what I like. And when you get the performance packages like the Z07 or the Z51 packs on the Stingrays, that does add to the desirability and the resale value down the road. So that's another thing I appreciate. And honestly, with the Stingray Corvettes, you really need that Z51. For the Stingray to look good, you need that Z51 along with the high wing spoiler and the black rims. Honestly, I hate the way a base Stingray looks. It is not pretty in my personal opinion. Whereas the E-Ray, what I like about that, it essentially has the same body as the Z06. I love that because that's the proper aggressive looking Corvette that I've always wanted. And the Z06 is simply special with that flat plane crank V8. But because of that, obviously dealerships are charging like 200 grand a quarter mil for a Z06. If your local dealerships are playing games on the Z06, but you're able to get an E-Ray at MSRP in a specification that you want in a reasonable amount of time, or if it's just sitting there on the lot, honestly, the E-Ray is impressive. We can go over some specs here. 2.5 seconds, zero to 60, along with a 10.5 second quarter mile at 130 miles per hour. Those are some serious specs. And the E-Ray is gonna have the Stingray's 6.2 liter V8 with the same 495 horsepower, but the electric motor is gonna drive the front wheels. So that 6.2 V8 is driving the rear wheels, the electric motor in the front is 160 horsepower for a combined output of 655 horsepower. So that's almost as much as the Z06 and on paper, it's faster in a straight line. But some of you might be thinking, oh, that's gonna weigh a lot with the all wheel drive, with the electric motors. It weighs about three to 400 pounds more than a base Stingray. So this E-Ray ranges between 3,700 to 3,800 pounds. A Z06 is about 3,500 pounds. So yes, it certainly weighs more, but considering everything that it's packing, you know, all wheel drive, electric motor, that's really not terrible. And you add to the fact this is a daily drivable Corvette. It's like the Acura NSX, but better in my opinion, because we have the V8 engine in it. And it looks amazing because it has that Z06 body on it. Comment below, let me know if you agree with that, uh, if you like the way the E-Ray slash Z06 looks. So I think that's a great alternative to a Z06 if you're not able to get that, but if you can get it, that five and a half liter flat plane crank, 670 horsepower Z06, that is a special car. And it's screaming at over 8,000 RPMs to 8,600, I believe. Because I won't lie to you, after driving the 2020 Stingray, that was a pretty bland and boring driving experience. I've heard they improved it for the 2021s and up, but the 2020, it felt like a very mellow and safe driving car, it had a lot of understeer 
type tendencies to it. Some of you might be offended by that, whatever, but that's just the reality. And that's why the E-Ray and the Z06, that seems a lot more special to me. But if you're interested, I mean, a 2LT, with the Z51 is high wing spoiler. That's going to cost around $85,000-ish. And I would honestly, I would go for the power folding hardtop for an additional $7,000. That's worth it to me because you're not going to catch me physically uh, removing that top uh, with the coops. I hate that. I want to press the button and see the thing go down. Uh, not to mention, I like the buttresses that come on the folding hardtop. I think that looks cool. I think it looks exotic, similar to the Ferrari hardtop folding convertibles. But it is $7,000. I think it's worth it. But for those of you who want to save that money, it is cool that you can still take off the top, have a Targa with the regular coupes. I love the way Chevrolet gives you that ability and that's one of the main reasons why I like this car. Even though the Stingray might not be my most favorite driving car in the world, it does offer me two things that I really appreciate. A hardtop convertible experience along with a really nice interior. This is the only car to come close to the Lexus LC500 interior space. This far exceeds any of the Porsche interiors or any other sports car out there, Jaguar F-Type, all that stuff. This is way better. It's actually put together rather well. I like the material choices, the comfort of the seats. All of that is great. And the ride quality is genuinely impressive. So for those of you who aren't really that super serious about driving, but you just like the way a mid-engine car looks, obviously go with the Stingray. If you know you're not a hardcore driver, you're just screwing around with it, you know, not really doing much, Stingray is perfect for you. It's a great flexing car. The other thing is it's a new car under warranty. That's the thing I like for under six figures. That Z06 is special if you can get your hands on it. E-Ray is the next best choice. It's just sad the dealer games that they're playing with these vehicles. Honestly, the MSRP prices for what you're getting isn't half bad, but we'll see. As we progress in society, I'm sure the economy is gonna get worse and worse, and these toys are just gonna be sitting on the lot and people are actually gonna be concerned about reality and you know things like eating and surviving. When the toys are just sitting there with this crazy interest rate environment and you have some cash piled up and you can pay cash for these vehicles, that might be a better time to strike and with the Stingrays, I would definitely negotiate a three to $5,000 discount on those cars because the hype has died down. This is like the Kia Stinger from 2018. Like the hype is gone now. Definitely do not buy these cars used. You're still gonna see $100,000 used C8s on the market. Don't buy those cars. Those are the fools that paid six figures for the Stingrays and now they're trying to get rid of it by charging what they paid for it essentially so don't even bother messing with the used market try to get a new one negotiate a discount if you can especially on the stingrays if not pick it up at msrp that's fine too if it's in a spec and a color that you really like but that's it for this video let me know your thoughts on the c8 corvette do you have one on order can you share with us your experiences with the dealerships the waiting games on any model, or if you are a current owner, we would like to hear how the vehicle has been holding up for you. But thanks again for watching, take care, and goodbye.